I'm a real GV, Omar. What I am, family? It's your boy SN TV. Back at y'all with another Chirac Street Legends. And this episode is gonna be about none other than MMG Rome, aka Rome the Goon. Gang, gang. I damn near smoke but I have to put my mind out. Yep. Niggas wired like they in NBA timeouts. Yep. I'm as real as it gets, and so let me find out that you rappers be lying on shit that you rhyme about. <laughs> Woo! 28 on that truck, I gotta climb out. Yep. Bitch, I'm ballin', you a hack like I ain't signed out. Rome is originally on 43rd and Federal, or the Robert Taylor Holmes. He will migrate to the hundreds at a young age, where he will begin to put in work in the streets. From the project, 43rd and Federal, you know, moved to the 100, 105th state. Shouts out to them boys, man. Rome will end up moving to 105th in the process of them becoming Goon Town. How, how, how long this, this, this Goon Town shit been affiliated, if you don't mind telling the people? started in the summer of 05, four guys, no lies, all on the fucking ride. So they started a click called Goon Town. Told everybody in the hood they had to move around. That shit was in 05 though, man. Goon Town is a set of predominantly GDs off 105th and State. They also go by the name of MMG, or Marty Muggy Gang, in honor of two of their dead homies. Marty. Oh. My nigga, man. Big Marty, my nigga, man. Big Marty, Marty man. Big Marty, 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 man. So yeah. shut the Marty. Marty, And Muggy, who were both killed by their ops. They also represent 357 Gang, which is basically an alliance between them, Shannon Block, Tommy World, EBD, D Block, E Block, and RMG. I'm at, man. Where I'm at right now, man. Come on, Shannon Block, SB, man. SB, man. SB, man. Squash it. Fuck, fuck the MC. Prince Town K. Fuck all them niggas. We ain't on that game bang shit. Will we stay on that shit, but it is what it is. Their main ops are Wentworth Mob, which is 10-4L, Snake Pit, and Ruleville. But they also have a hate for Prince Town as well. Talk about MMG, Marty Monkey Game, man. Ex explain oh, yeah. that, man. Like, is that the same as 10 Fire? Is that the same as Goon Town? Is it the same? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the same. MMG is. We we Goon Town first and foremost. Let them know, man. What block? What what what? Hundred fifth, hundred fourth state, man. Y'all already, already know. know how we come. Goon Town shit. We just throwing it up like this. You Real get, talk. Yeah, that Goony Yellow Line shit, man. So that so 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 you ain't just jumped off the porch. So so like explain no, the shit. Listen, you know, let, like, me, let me. I've been off the porch since I was fifteen. That was two thousand five. I am twenty four. You feel me? I'm gonna be twenty five. Yeah, it might don't seem like I'm a youngie. You feel me? Nigga, you know it. Try me. But like I say, shit, going town, man, 05, man, a lot, a lot of us, man, a lot of shorties, a lot of, a lot of badass shorties, man, put themselves together, made some shit, and, and ran with the shit. Now this shit like a real loud worldwide shit. Like, so is it, 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 it's going town, GTC known in the county, man? What folks know about in the county? Boy, they know about that shit. Can you go in the county? Your motherfucker don't know me. They'll think they said like I'm a some six seven nigga, three three hundred pounds. You feel me? I'm one sixty lightweight. You feel me? But that shit ain't about nothing, man. GTC shit, and you know DBC D Block, man. I'm my little bros, man. And but MMG is the brand though. Marty Muggy Gang. That's the that's the squad. That's so for the, the people that don't know, man, who who is Marty or what is Muggy, man? Speak speak about that, man. R.P. Marty, man. R.P. Marty, man. Man, young nigga died young, man. Young, bro, cool nigga, man. Rest in peace, big little bro, man. Motherfucker took him from us, man. But, I mean, this the streets, bro. This how this so, shit goes. So, so, basically, MMG is, is the name of y'all homies, and y'all just yeah. let they, yeah. name live on. Yeah, ain't no Maybach, not Rock, none Okay, that okay. Shit, okay. No. That's Shout all. out Maybach, though. You see MMG, no Maybach. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, man, you got a tag, bro? Oh, you hold on, what they say for? MMG, MCK, fuck the snakes, and PTK, fuck the house, man. You already know. Real talk. Man. So in the hundreds, it, it, it ain't about gangs. It's, a, it's about blocks, bro. In the hundreds, yeah. In the hundreds, it's about. I mean, it, it's sex, basically. Yeah, man. Like, like it be like 
it's it's a lot of shit behind this shit. Like like this shit be all fun and game, bro. But like behind the cameras, bro, this shit a lot of shit be full for a lot of shit be hard, a lot of shit be fake, bro. Ain't no ain't no just cause a motherfucker keep a smile on their face, that don't mean a motherfucker happy, you feel me? Real but talk. you don't want no motherfucker seeing you frown. Real you talk. Rome's street life will start when he was around the age of 15 and living in the city of Chicago, getting involved with gangs at an early age could only result in two things, either death or jail. Rome would spend a lot of his time locked up as a youngster. I've been off the porch since I was 15. That was 2005. I am 24, you feel me? I'm gonna be 25. Yeah, it might don't seem like I'm a youngie, you feel me? You know it. Try me. Ron would begin to turn up in the streets. He was really starting to make his name known. He would start getting locked up for petty stuff like possession of marijuana. It wasn't until around 2009 that he would really begin to get investigated for serious crimes. The police would begin to look into Rome for killing one of his friends. Allegedly, according to the brother of the victim, in Rome, he died in a drive-by shooting. But the police thought otherwise. And this would really begin to make Rome's name hot in the streets, especially with the police. Authorities announced charges Saturday against two Southside men accused of faking a story about a drive-by shooting after one of them fatally shot a friend while playing with a gun more than a year and a half ago. Cook County Judge Maria Cecil ordered Jerome Kraft 19 held on a $250,000 bail on a charge of involuntary manslaughter and Deontay Moore 22 held on a $150,000 bail on one count of concealing a homicidal death in the November 24, 2007 shooting of Nashawn Kimball. Kraft was playing with a loaded handgun while he, Kimball, and Moore were in the house in the 108th block of South State Street on the afternoon of the shooting. Kimball told Kraft to quit fooling around with the firearm, but Kraft kept at it. Eventually, the gun went off, striking Kimball in the chest. Moore and Kraft then carried Kimball's body out of the house and laid it on the sidewalk on 109th Street in the Roseland neighborhood. They concocted a tale that Kimball had been killed in the drive-by shooting. Shortly after the killing, Chicago police reported that witnesses said several people were walking in the 108th block of South State Street with Kimball lagging behind the group when shots rang out and hit him in his chest. Witnesses at the time said they saw an older green car fleeing the scene. The new story recently came to light when witnesses began cooperating with police. The judge said Saturday that she was told during an earlier court hearing that Moore and Kimball were brothers. Kraft of the 104th block of South Rhodes Avenue and more of the 55th block of South Aberdeen Street faced preliminary hearings Monday. The manslaughter charges will end up being thrown out because of lack of evidence, but Rome will still have to do some time in jail. Rome would go and do two and a half years, but before he would, he would go crazy with the music. He would start dropping songs and everybody in the hundreds would hear him and everybody would like him. You couldn't help but to notice Rome actually had bars. Little bitch, it ain't a reason to play goon. It's not tolerated like shower shoes in the day room. This was beginning to make Rome in the hundreds hot. To the point to where everybody knew Rome and everybody was talking about him. Rome's going to jail kind of altered the plans. And when he came out, it wasn't the same. Rome, who was going by Shorty Rome before he was incarcerated, got out of jail with a different type of mindset. He actually kind of changed his music and gave you a more positive vibe. And he didn't rep Goontown as much, but he repped something called NRNLB, or No Real Niggas Left Behind, which was his own movement he was trying to implicate. The streets wouldn't be feeling this new change. They would begin to say that this wasn't the old Rome and that they needed that old Rome back. Plus, the streets was calling Rome. He was trying to stay out of the streets and they were pulling him back in. Yeah, shit. What, what hey, now nah, though, but like you were saying though, like on that fell out shit. I mean, you gotta understand some shit. Like when I got locked up, I was a, I was a shorty. I was a child when I got locked up, you know. And I went to jail my juvenile, my teen years. And I mean, when I came home, it was I wanted to, you know, when you go to jail for a certain amount of time. I went to jail for two and a half years, you know. So I'm like, damn. 
I'm a, I gotta get out these streets. I gotta do some shit. You feel me? I mean, in this jail talk, at a, at one point in time, at one point in time, that's what I really wanted to do: stay out the street. But then you know, you got homies and niggas you grew up with from the sandlot, and you in this shit. And I just fell back into the streets. And if I could, I wouldn't change shit. You know, it is what it is. God don't make no mistakes. Man. Ron will end up picking up his pistol and hopping back in the streets head first. But now. Ron was a much bigger target. He was someone that the ops couldn't continue to let walk around, knowing that he had the potential to take his hood to another level. Oh, damn. That shit crazy, man. No, no, no exit wound. This bitch still in me. I'm full now. Moving like it ain't no gang shit. Man, Ron, what's been happening with you, man? Shit, man, that motherfucker shot my goof ass up. Bro, what, what the fuck happened, man? Talk about that shit, man. Some amateurs, man. That motherfucker come, I'm coming out of my OG crib. It's 65 degrees. Two niggas with black bullets on like we don't do this shit. I ran the way up that Straight bitch. Down. I just ain't faster than no bullet shit. Sent about 30. I got hit in <laughs> with a nickel in the back. Bullet still in me, it ain't shit though. Gang shit, man. Damn, that yeah. shit crazy. Man. I can up the gun though, old four them. I'm Gucci, old Marty. Damn, what you was getting prepared for, man? Oh, I had to show that day, that bitch ass. Uh, but I had got out the hospital like five hours later. I was trying to make that shit, but Green Bay like four hours away. I wasn't gonna make that shit. Damn, that's fucked up, man. That's crazy. I seen that shit on Spot News and shit, man. Yeah, they be Friday Bulls talking about up a top tier talk and shit. Shit, I, if Larry who what what's Larry who shit? If I was top ten target, shit. <laughs> why you think well, why, why you think Spot News gave you that that title? No, the top Spot team? News ain't gave me the title. Spot News, they just they some clowns. Well, they just be going off them police scanners. You feel me? So on the police scanner, when they tell me my, when they ask me my name and I get shot and shit, they come on the uh that shit go through the scanner and shit. Police up there before the doctors could even examine the motherfucker, but they don't even be right there when shit be cracking though. That shit be crazy. What day was on when they came to the hospital, bro? Oh my MFG tap. Yeah, he got that MFG tap. He watered up nigga. Mmm. That's what it is. That's what it is. Now did that shit that did that little shoot slap um stop you from 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 the music shit or what? I didn't go flesh, bro. When I got shot, bro, I thought my my talent got to it, bro, because I couldn't think of shit to rap, bro. I was just bending blocks on Marty, bro. Mm. But I, don't, I just, I'm decent, though. That shit ain't really a fake shit, bro. I'm falling on that shit ain't a fake shit. It is what it is, man. That shit happened to the best of us. Shit, some niggas get shot and don't get back up. I got shot and then fall, shit, so. Real talk, real I'm talk. Gucci. Ron will actually continue on his path in the streets and doing music. He was slowly pulling away from the streets, but still doing music at the same time. This will begin to work. He started getting more and more jobs to go out of town and perform. But in October of 2015, Ron will be snatched off the stage by the police. He will be charged with attempted murder and unlawful discharge of a firearm. He will be facing 31 years. Who on this phone call for Cook County Jail? You already know, man. It's your boy, 10-5-MLG, wrong, man. What the fuck you do? Hey, bro, man. This is the first exclusive interview with you. You know what I'm saying? I, since you, you've been gone, man. Like, they slashed your ass off stage, bro. Yeah, yeah, man. You know how the people play dirty mark. Monitoring Facebook and shit, that's how they do. Motherfucker put up that they was going to perform. They snatched me up. Shit, money, though. Motherfucker was definitely going to come home in August, man. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, man. Shit look real good. Real, real good. Everybody thought I was locked up for some murders and shit. Nah, it was, I was on the investigation for, for a couple of murders and shit. Nah, but they couldn't put that shit on me, so they pent this goof fire September murder on me. You know what that shit, man. Dion Bell testified that he was walking in the alley behind his house on West 112th Street in Chicago when a Durango drove past him at a high speed. He yelled at the vehicle to slow down. It was approximately noon and bright outside. Bell, standing less than 10 feet from the vehicle, saw three occupants, including a woman driving and a man in the rear passenger seat. The man in the rear passenger seat told him, we ain't gotta do shit because this our motherfucking alley. And the Durango drove off. Bell identified the man as the defendant in court. 
on October 6, 2015, at around 7.50 a.m., Bell was sitting on his front porch. A red Chrysler 200C stopped across the street, and a man exited and approached Bell. Bell did not immediately recognize him. The man moved his right index finger in a gesture Bell recognized as a request for marijuana and asked Bell if he ever wore his dreads in twists. During the September incident, Bell's hair was in twists, but it was not on October 6, 2015. When Bell confirmed that he previously wore his hair in twists, the man identified himself as a passenger in the Durango during the September incident. As Bell and the man stood in front of the porch, the man walked one foot from Bell and said, don't run. Bell then recognized the man and again identified him as a defendant in court. The defendant lifted his shirt and Bell saw a firearm with an extended clip in his waistband. Bell ran across his line, heard gunshots, and realized he was hit. He did not see defendant pull the trigger, but no one else was in the area. Bell's brother and sister, who were inside the house, came outside to assist him. Bell went to the hospital, where he remained for four to five weeks. He sustained gunshots to his left arm and his back. The bullet that entered his back exited through his stomach, leaving scars in both areas. He also needed surgery to remove a bullet lodged in his left wrist. At some point, Bell's brother came to the hospital and showed him a YouTube video featuring a rap artist. Bell identified the defendant as the artist. In the video, the defendant held a firearm with an extended clip that resembled the one that Bell saw on October 6, 2015. On October 15, 2015, Bell went to the police station to view the photo array. The defendant's photo was one of six in the array. Bell identified the defendant as the shooter on October 31, 2015. Bell returned to the police station and viewed a single photo of defendant, a still frame from the YouTube video in which held a firearm with an extended clip. Bell again identified the defendant as the shooter. On cross-examination, Bell testified that he did not know exactly how much time passed between the September incident and the shooting. He denied that any individual exited the Durango during the September incident. He also denied fleeing into his yard. Ron would end up being convicted of these crimes. Now he will have to do the time at 85%. And his parole date would be set from 2017 to 2029. And I think that what we can learn from the story of Rome is this. Never let nobody dictate your pace. Everything that's worth anything is always going to take time. Rome allowed the streets to dictate his pace. Rome, you're not doing this. Rome. You're not dropping the type of music that we want you to drop fast enough. It kind of led Rome to get back in the streets because when Rome was in the streets, Rome was making his best music. But not only that, there was things going on with Rome in his personal life. But he would sit all that to the side just to allow his fans and his homies to dictate his pace. And another thing, we have to learn to be able to understand and recognize when we have a certain gift. Rome was one of the best, not only in the hundreds, but one of the best in the city of Chicago, especially at the time when he was doing what he was doing. He began to take rap serious when it was too late. This has been another episode of Chirac Street Legends. It's your boy, SCNTV. It's 2, 14 p.m. Tuesday. August 15th, 2017, right? As we all know, um, Rome, aka Jerome Crab, as the state would call him, has been fighting his, 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 his case for quite some time now, you know? Since he got snatched, snatched off stage at his show in um, uh, October 2015 or whatever. Y'all know there was a you know, on TMZ, Rap catch up. It was on every major blog site out here. That's you know what I'm saying. That, that deals with hip hop. So today was sentencing. The judge found. Um, you know, I, I try to keep my personal life to a minimum. You know what I'm saying. Uh, but the judge, you know, last month or the month before, she felt guilty or whatever. 
you know. Uh, the prosecutor, the DA, they they use everything in their will to convict Shorty to, to try to get him to max. You know what I'm saying? They, they wanted to slam him. Long story short, uh, um, George found him guilty. She gave that young man 16 years in the Illinois Department of Corrections. 16 years, you know? And that's 16 years at 85%. You do the math how long that's going to be before the next time we see him. But, you know, we praying for appeal, you know, for the record he had to pay for you. Wasn't we, didn't, we don't believe in public defenders, PDEs. My little brother got a paid lawyer. You understand what I'm saying? Like, we don't believe in public defenders. We don't we don't believe that. Because whether a public defender lose or win, they get paid regardless. You understand what I'm saying? They, they're not really going to fight for you. They don't give a fuck about you. You understand what I'm saying? If you don't got money, you're nobody. <clears throat> I really don't understand how, how the situation occurred. You know what I'm saying? With a paid lawyer, how he was still... I'm sorry, man. I don't even have any change right now. I don't understand how the situation occurred. Um, all we, all we could do right now at this point is continue to pray for, for Rome, keep him in our prayers, you know. Um, and 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 just keep hope alive. You understand what I'm saying? I got a lot of unreleased music and shit like that, so I'm gonna put that out when the time is necessary. Like 16 years is a long time long time. You understand what I'm saying? And for you rappers, because that's what they brought up in court. They, they kept bringing up brandishing weapons. You know what I'm saying? Flashing guns and shit in front of the in front of the camera. You know what I'm saying? On YouTube. <sighs> y'all, look. If y'all if if gonna use weapons, because in, in a lot of my videos, my past videos, we, we use prop guns. If y'all gonna use weapons, use prop guns, man. These people... Is out here and they watching us. You know, Chicago had the spotlight since 2012 as far as like captivating the world with this drill music, quote unquote. So everything we do is frowned upon us. You know what I'm saying? And they will try to do whatever they could do to, to to take us, you know, off these streets. You know, take our life away from us. You know, and they don't understand as African Americans we have put in certain situations that we have to do what we have to do in 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 order to survive out here in these streets so they wouldn't understand that coming from where they come from you know what i'm saying so to them we're animals and the, and the shit that we do is not caused for but they don't understand because they don't live in our shoes day-to-day -day basis and i'm not making any excuses like you know it's a man he's a man i'm a man they let, they let Rome speak right before a sentence, and they let him speak, right? And and the man said, you know, whatever you give me, judge, is my time. I'm going to take it on the chin, you know, even though I know I, I, I didn't do it, you know? And, and Shorty is really innocent. I'm not saying he's an angel. His father didn't say he was an angel. He didn't even state that he was an angel. But the crime, quote, unquote, that the state of Illinois and the DA is saying that he did, he didn't do it. It's a fact. He didn't do it. Um, so this man is taking 16 years of his life, you know, for some shit he didn't do. Talent, very, very, very talented individual. I don't think it'll never be another artist quite as talented when it comes to bars and lyrics and, and, and song formats is wrong, you know. One of the artists that put on for the Roseland every of the Wild Hunters, you know. Um, it's a sad day. Sad day.